I just opened my phone to a video of Dixie D'Amelio saying the n-word. These are racist that we are giving our time and our money. Looks Earl saying the n-word and bullying POC people. Everyone pretend to be shocked. Like, what the <laughs> To be honest, when a white influencer's racist past is brought up, I don't know why it shocks me at all at this point. Oh, and by the way, if you don't stop having a racist phase until you graduate college, that's not a racist phase. That's a racist life. What do your parents being addicts have to do with this situation of you being racist? My household was literally just Fox News all the time. Rush oh, Limbaugh, God, like if you guys know that it is, like play literally. God. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Lauren. I do random content on my channel whenever I can. So if you all have been on TikTok for the past like week or so, then you may already know about the Brooke Schofield incident that's going on. Well, turns out it's not just her. Like, I think yesterday or two days ago, it's been revealed that it's also Alex Earl and Dixie D'Amelio who are being called out right now for past tweets, racism, and saying the end slur. So, um, you know, I can't say that we're surprised anymore that this happens with a lot of influencers. But yeah, let's just get into it. Before we do, I do want to stress, please don't send any hate to anyone mention this video. Purpose of this video is to talk about it, give our opinion, and yeah, let's just get started into the video. To be honest with y'all, I had no idea who Brooke Schofield was. Turns out her and Tana Manju, I'm sorry if I butchered her last name, they're on a podcast together called Cancelled, and that's how a lot of people know who Brooke is. So at first, I was planning on just talking about Brooke Schofield because that's what's going around on TikTok right now. But after recently finding out about Alex Earl and Dixie D'Amelio, I was like, okay, you know what, let's just structure this. So I'll talk about Brooke Schofield first, and then Alex Earl, and then Dixie D'Amelio. So let's get into it. So Brooke Schofield right now is currently being dragged on TikTok for racist tweets and saying slurs and just a bunch of mess that happened when she was literally like from 16 to like in college which is insane by the way so brooke is getting a lot of backlash for the racist tweets and the slurs that she posted but the one tweet that she is getting a lot of backlash over that a lot of people are very pissed over rightfully so is a tweet that she made regarding trayvon martin so for those of you guys who don't know in 2012 trayvon martin who was 17 years old at the time was fatally shot by a hispanic male he shot him and the boy was just holding skittles so Basically, she was sympathizing with George Zimmerman. George Zimmerman was the Hispanic male who shot Trayvon Martin. And Zimmerman, he constantly to this day is happy at what he did. Like he signs, he autographs bags of Skittles. He still is proud to this day of what he did. And that is like very, very sick if you ask me. So the ironic thing about this is that she right now, she wrote those tweets when she was like, 16 in college whenever and she's using the logic oh guys please like accept my apology because i was young at the time while trayvon martin was 17 years old he was young at the time also and you had no sympathy for him you know what i mean you know i'm just sitting here thinking that while she was making those tweets and everything and voting for trump in 2016 because it was found out she voted for trump I'm just sitting here thinking that I was 12 years old at the time in the sixth grade. And for those of you guys who may have not watched my vlogs, because a lot of you are new to my channel, um, I went to a predominantly um, Hispanic Mexican school. And all I'm thinking about when I was 12 years old was that a bunch of kids in my class were scared that they were going to get deported because Trump was elected president. And I'm also thinking back to the time when I was going to start ninth grade and the El Paso Walmart incident happened in 2019. And we had threats at our local Walmarts because I live in a predominantly Hispanic Mexican area. I'm speaking from my experience of being Hispanic. I grew up in a predominantly Hispanic area. I have friends who are Hispanic. I have family who are Hispanic. So that's how I can kind of relate. At the same token, I'm a light-skinned Hispanic, so I will never understand what it's like to be darker complected because we do have a major colorism issue in our community. At the same time, I will never understand what it's like to be a black person in this country as I am not black. And what I find so crazy, every time a white influencer gets called out for stuff like this, it's always, oh, like, I was young, I was naive, this and that, whatever. And it's like, your rhetoric also harms a lot of people in a lot of different communities. And in the case with Brooke Schofield, she's over here saying, like, I'm young and whatever. Like, I'm sorry I made those comments when I was young. 
while also saying that Trayvon Martin deserved to get shot. So it's just been a mess and a half and she did post an apology and that apology was pretty shitty to say the least. Hey guys, I have had a lot to say about accountability lately and how important it is and how far it can go and I feel like I'm not taking my own advice. Obviously by now you guys have seen the tweets that are circulating around. They unfortunately are not fake. Those are real tweets, like real things that I said. First of all, I want to acknowledge that I feel the same way about them that you do. I think they're so disturbing, they're wrong, they're horrible, and they're disgusting. Well, of course, I do appreciate the people who are coming to bat for me and, like, saying, like, you know, it was so long ago and, like, she's grown and stuff, but, like, it doesn't, honestly, it doesn't fucking matter. Like, it literally does not matter. They are horrible. I want to talk about, particularly, the Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman situation. I try not to be so emotional because I don't want it to seem like it's, like, a sympathy thing at all. I also don't want to blame anybody else at all, and so I'm trying, like, to be really careful about that. I just want to explain, like, give some context into, like, my mindset at the time because i have seen like some comments today that are like well no shit she's racist like white nepo baby like a little like spoiled brat like and that was not my situation and my parents were addicts so i was adopted by my grandparents when i was like 10 and i grew up with them from that point on and as is true for a lot of grandparents they're a little bit less progressive than a lot of us are now and my grandma has dementia so it was really just like me and my grandpa and he is a very very right-wing conservative man okay it was like my household was literally just fox news all the time rush limbaugh like if you guys know who that is like playing literally all day long through the house and that was just like the only thing ever that i had been exposed to a lot of you guys have also seen my mom's twitter because she was responding back and forth about the trayvon martin situation and i just should have known better i know her and i should have known that she is not somebody that i take any sort of political insight from at all again sometimes you like have these people that you like put on a pedestal and you think everybody older than you is smarter than you and knows everything and they do not truthfully it took me a really long time like i know some of the tweets i was like 18 and people are like yeah like she was old enough to know better like honest to god you guys it wasn't until like even after college that i really started to like shift my way of thinking and there are people in my life who i might have looked up to forever who i do not agree with i think it's amazing now that people are like learning earlier on about politics and like forming their own opinions outside of like what their parents think or what they're hearing or whatever it is but i that just wasn't the case for me I, whatever i heard i passed on i'm sorry very very sorry to anybody who is hurt by the tweets because obviously they are very hurtful like a lot of it is just like like what like why would i even say that and i apologize for not having said something sooner i just felt like i was getting these messages from people who like were hurt by them and i felt like by bringing more attention to it i was just going to be hurting more people and that was not the right mindset i should have said something sooner and i would never let something go this far again like i love you all so much and obviously i know that there are some people who are just like not gonna care for me anymore like i understand that i just i need you to know that like it's not how i think that is not what i believe and i am 27 years old now i've had so much time to like learn and grow and like formulate my own opinions and they are nothing like they were when i was 17 18 years old what baffles me every time this happens to an influencer and it's happening to brooke's comment section right now of her apology is that people are in her comments who are not black who are not of any minority she offended and they're over here saying like oh we forgive you we've all been there who's we you know like who is we and the apology is not for you it's not for you did she offend you i don't think so you know what i mean so i always get mad when white people accept an apology that is not for them that always bothers me but yeah so she's over here apologizing and speaking of apologies, not even a day later, it was shown that she liked a picture featuring Donald Trump. So did she actually change? I don't think so, especially like, also, this is probably my opinion, but the fact that it took her till after college to realize what she was doing was wrong. You know what I mean? Like, I do believe people can grow and change and all that, but she realized it after college. Like, you're already, like, what, 22 when you get out of college? And the fact that she's liking posts about Donald Trump, like, now while she's getting called out for this, I don't think she's changed, and I just think she wants sympathy at this point, to be honest. What I also find interesting, though, is had Brooke had, like, a normal job, like everyone else does, she probably would have lost the job. Because that's how it works in the working class. You, If you're called out for doing things like that, you will lose your job. But in her case... She's still going to have money. She's still going to have fame, whatever, right? Moving on to Alex Earl. I actually knew who she was at the same token. I wasn't a fan of her. So her tweets are also resurfacing in which she has said the N-word, bunch of slurs. I wasn't going to make a video about this because I was like, it's midnight. It's late. I've been talking so much about race on my page, but I did want to look it up just to see what was going on with Alex Earl. So, you know, I hit Reddit where all the secrets are. And oh my fucking God, I got out of bed and had to post this. This is the N-word a whole bunch on Tumblr, which I think at this point in our lives, white people saying the N-word is not too, haha, like, ooh, it's almost expected, right? 
but whoever put this on reddit left left a little comment because i think they went to school with her okay so maybe she didn't go to school with them but let me read to you what the poster said alex earl saying racist things in the n-word when she was when she was 15. she also bullied she also bullied poc girls in high school for having their hair texture and shouted on the streets of red bank new jersey for mexicans to go back to go back where they came from i've posted these before and she has blocked me and it didn't go viral so hopefully this time people can see who she is and that she doesn't deserve this platform they, they also got blocked by her and i can show you that if you want to this user thought that was the picture they posted that she was blocked because this girl was like this girl was going after oh my god that was a mob that is a sign from the universe to stop talking about racism because it's giving too much bad juju to me i need to go to bed bye alex earl making comments about black and hispanic people as well as using many slurs such as the n and the f slur honestly pisses me off because at the end of the day like i said with brooke alex may have been young at the time but her comments that she made back then adds to harmful rhetoric that our communities have to deal with as of right now, Alex has not released an apology or has said anything about it. And apparently, this is not the first time that people have tried to bring this to the internet's attention. And like I mentioned before, I do think people can change. But in this instance of that one person who tried to bring it to the internet's attention, she got blocked. So if you don't want to hold yourself accountable, then I don't really think Alex may have changed that much. And lastly, Miss Dixie D'Amelio was caught on video saying the end slur. I just opened my phone to a video of Dixie D'Amelio saying the N-word. So if I have to see it, you have to see it too. Fuck with the orange P and shake Fuck with the herpes SCD I'm very disturbed. I don't know if because Brooke Schofield's past is coming out. Now everybody's past is coming out. Apparently a video of Alex Earl also just got around. So in two days, Brooke Schofield, Dixie D'Amelio, probably Charlie D'Amelio because they're sisters, and Alex Earl have they have shown their true colors these are racist that we are giving our time and our money i'm just shocked and she said that shit real proud and i bet they all say it just like that around each other all these people because that just makes me think of all the people that they be around all these other famous influencers wasn't she dating noah beck so do we think he says it too i doubt he doesn't we gotta watch these white folks lastly i just want to say to end this video off i don't think any of these influencers are gonna be ever fully canceled because i don't know it feels like we never actually end up fully canceling these people. Like James Charles still has a platform. Drake still has a platform. All these people still have platforms, even though they've done horrendous things and they've said horrendous things. At the end of the day, they're still gonna have money. They're gonna have some sort of fame and they're still gonna have some fans who are gonna back them up. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to like, subscribe and share and comment down below what else you guys want me to talk about on my channel. Um. Yeah, that's kind of it. I just wanted to give my opinion on all of this. I'd like to hear what you guys think down below. And yeah, with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Stay safe. And I'll see you guys next time on my channel. Bye, guys.